So I just want to take a few moments to talk about prototyping axles. So surprisingly, one of the questions we get asked quite a lot is if we have axles that we're able to sell to people. And, you know, back in the day when we were actually actively producing axles, we, we were even able to do that. But nowadays, we just don't have any available to sell anymore. But we do have a lot of experience and knowledge in making axles for trucks that we were working on. So this is kind of the whole chronology here. Uh, to start off with, this was an early other plant truck, a P1 other plant truck, I think this was. P1 start is for production model one. So this is a very near finalized truck with an early axle in it. And uh, for our early prototype axles, what we actually just used was threaded rod. So uh, this plastic had, uh, it was bored out using uh, a mill drill or a drill press would work. Just put in a vise, drilled in from one side, flipped around, drilled in from the other side, and then you get a set of these lock, these nuts on there, you lock them together and you put a socket on it and you screw the whole thing into the plastic. And that's what we'd, that's how we make our axles. And then of course we'd, we'd lock it on the other side. So because it's threaded in, if I go to knock it, it's not gonna move. It's, it's, it's locked into the plastic of the truck. And, uh, and this is, the threaded rod is by far the easiest and cheapest and quickest way to make an axle work. And we use threaded rods for a, a really long time. Uh, the drawback is, of course, threaded rod isn't that strong. Uh, I think that you're able to get some really strong threaded rod. You could probably even get some grade eight stuff and that would make for some incredibly strong axles. But the stuff you're gonna be able to pick up at Home Depot is gonna be lower grade, like grade three or grade five. Um, but, uh, and so that's gonna restrict you and limit you to make, to using 10 millimeter axles instead of eight millimeter. So here's a here's an eight millimeter axle. This is what most people have. And you can see that's 10 millimeters right there. And uh, if, if you were to use a eight millimeter threaded rod, it just wouldn't have the strength needed to do a real prototype. So our prototypes had to, um, they weren't just a prototype you'd stand on to make sure it was working. Uh, all the early prototyping with other plant stuff was, um, it, it was ridden until it was thrashed. You know, everything was ridden to the point of failure and then put back together and taken out and ridden again. And that was our whole development process. If you look at all of our old videos we're making boards, um, all our boards were really overly simplistic because they were just going out there to be ridden to death. And that's kind of the same approach with this is, uh, is they had to be robust enough to hold up for actual hardcore riding. And you know, the eight millimeter or the, these 10 millimeter threaded rods, they're not the strongest things in the world, but they were able to hold up well enough for that, but only in 10 millimeter. So I'm sure that these, these 10 millimeter uh, threaded rod axles were actually stronger than some 8mm commercial truck axles. Not all of them. The acceptable cheaper end stuff is probably about the same uh, strength as these 10mm threaded rod axles. So they're not, they should, they could do to be stronger, but they're adequate. And we continue to use these up until our, with the P2s. These are P2 hangers. These are still Delrin. You can see that we've completely changed the, uh, the form factor going on. Uh, but yeah, we're still using the, uh, the threaded rod axles and we kept using them for a long time until we were getting ready to actually sell stuff. So we had to get a more finalized product to get out to get ridden and tested as 
a product rather than as a prototype. So uh, I'll put these away. Moving on from the threaded rods, we ended. We went into uh, uh, lathed axles, and that's what's in this thing. This is one of our earlier P2s that's kind of starting to be more production ready, and this isn't this isn't machined Delrin. What this is is this is uh, UHMW or. Uh, Maybe it's just normal polyethylene. It's, it's polyethylene stock that has been put on the table saw to give it the square shape. And then it had the, the, the groove cut out with the CNC mill. And then this, this taper, the curve on the top, just cut on with a bandsaw. Uh, but they're approaching their final form factor, which is like, this is the final truck here. And so we're getting close, and so we wanted to have more legitimate axles that we're handing out to riders to test. And uh, so we were actually m m lathing our own axles out of just mild steel stock. And that's what this is. So you can see what we do is we'd uh, take this half inch rod and do a step down to uh, 10 millimeters. And that's what you can see there, the step down. And then it's stepped down a little further at the at the end because the the thread size is actually just a tiny bit smaller than the 10 millimeter and you can see this one got messed up can we get some light on that yeah that one got messed up so that's why that's why i have that one it's a nice demonstration to the different steps here's a, uh, a finished one that was ready to put in something but i guess never did or it got pressed out i'm thinking this probably got pressed out of a truck that got destroyed and was going to be recycled into a new truck. But yeah, so these are just hand lathed. Um, I think uh, one of the guys out of the planet had just hired his nephew to churn these out uh, on his lathe in his shop. And he made dozens and dozens of these things. And uh, these were really good. These are really good axles. Uh, but they were time-consuming to make, even if, even if you're just paying your nephew uh, some some summer money. Uh, and we were hoping to find some more effective ways to uh, to do that. And then once once we kind of got on this path, we had our tongues wetted, and we really didn't want to go back to the threaded rod, even when we stepped back into more uh, different types of prototyping. So this is another axle type we figured out. So this was an attempt to uh, to do different construction, to make construction easier with a uh, with the axle. So what it is, is it's it's one of these axles uh, with the half inch rod that is actually set inside some square stock. And the square stock allows us to, you can see, screw plates of plastic onto the axle. And uh, we were able to screw stuff on both sides or any side. Uh, having a square axle is actually really convenient for trying to build stuff onto it. And so I think we were swapping out plastic pieces I think we were using different slot sizes, different slot heights, and uh, and and just uh, and so it was really useful to have uh, instead of an entire axle like this, something like this where we could take off a plate and replace it with a different one that was machined differently. So the the square axle came in uh, as a prototyping tool, and then the next one. This was actually this is a really cool idea. We were thinking we could make hollow square axles. And this is, I really, really like this idea. And there was just production limitations for mass production uh, that made this impractical. But for small batches and for, you know, trucks you make yourself, this is a really cool solution. But uh, what it is, is you take a piece of the square, uh, square rod, solid rod, 
which is what this plug is made out of, and it's you know make it about this big, and you machine ends on it, eight millimeter bearing surfaces on it and threads, and then you cut it in half so you have two little plugs that you then slide into the square stock and then you weld in or you could braze in or whatever's easiest. And then you actually end up with this really light, but incredibly strong axle. So this axle, even though it's, I mean, yeah, the, the, this axle right here is significantly lighter than this one, even though the thickness is significantly more. Huge diameter and tremendously strong, but very light. And uh, this unfortunately didn't last very long because we were going, we were so close to heading into actual production, I believe, if my memory serves, with these real axles. And so this was our next step. These are commercially made axles that we are ordering from a supplier made to our spec. And I can't remember if, if this is a supplier that specializes in making axles or, or what. Uh, but these are hardened and treated and professionally made axles that we are purchasing uh, and not making. So this is our, 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 our next step. Here, uh, there we go. So there's there's an there's a prototype truck with a axle that we made and here's one you can see of about the same vintage say the, the the hanger itself is made the exact same way and this one's got a commercial axle in it and uh, we're getting really close to the end of the other planet side of things this is uh, I believe what they're having now this is what the current p2 other plant trucks have. Uh, we now have eight millimeter axles at this point, as well as 10 millimeter. And we've got this, this uh, you know, I kind of like the gold look, but the, uh, the I think this is like a nickel plating or something that makes it more corrosion resistant, I think. Uh, and it, it makes it, makes it look nice too. So this is what the, this is kind of what the uh, end of line was with their axle development. For the other planets we were keeping experimenting and we were still building trucks for various things or just for fun or just to try experiments with and so we ended up doing more prototype axle designs and you know we still had access to uh these axles um uh, a little bit so we could occasionally get our hands on real axles uh for our trucks or we could just get our hands on the whole hanger like what we tried to do here and didn't work very well uh, but when we got into messing with dirt boards uh, these axles wouldn't work anymore you're starting you're, you're, you're working with a larger bearing size and larger axles for for dirt boards and that's what these were for I believe and what we started with with that was actually just taking bolts and welding bolts sticking out of the hanger. So we'd, we'd build a hanger. Let's say, let's say we're just looking at the plastic part of this thing. And we'd, we'd make a little spot for the axle to go on and we'd weld it in place. And we'd weld that one in place. And uh, that didn't last very long, but it was something we tried, so I wanted to mention it. That That's not the way to do it at all. That doesn't really work very well. It's hard to get things lined up. It's hard to get things straight. Uh, the, the welds aren't very strong, all, all sorts of problems with that, but we tried it. Uh, I think we made like two, two boards or something like that. What we ended up with, this is our, like, our go-to method now. And this, this method is good for making even production dirt board level strength where you want you know, huge axles like that. And that's to use uh, threaded couplings, I think they're called. And so they're just, they're just hexagonal pieces of metal plugs, right? And you're able to stick 
your axle itself is just a bolt. So it's kind of like this idea, but instead of welding the bolt, you're welding the threads. You can see we're able to, we were able to just use a brake to bend our metal that we're building the truck out of. And then from there, we were to take these threaded inserts and clamp them and they'd, they'd stay straight because they're able to rely on the backbone that we just bent for their alignment and they just weld it in and uh, that is a very very good way to uh, to make the axles so that's uh, depending on our application and what we're doing with the axles our three go-to methods are either to scrounge up some old axles out of something uh, either usually one of these uh, either from an old prototype or like this just in the truck that it's part of threaded rod is still a really good option and uh, we don't use it as much uh, but when it's applicable we'll still use that I'm actually working on a project right now where it's gonna have a threaded rod axle and then the last one uh, which is what Riley's been doing anytime he makes trucks is with these threaded inserts and this allows you to have different widths without spending more money on rod it has the strength to hold up to uh, you know the dirt boarding and, and all that fun stuff uh, it's really easy to weld and uh, as long as you have a welder and uh, and it's just a very easy method uh, especially for, for Riley to do with the tools he's got. So, uh, all right. So I guess I guess there that's it. Uh, there's a lot of history there, a lot of interesting ideas, and all the different stages we went through, and what we ended up with. So there we go. Longboard technology over and out. <laughs>